So in this video, I thought we'd take a look at the DeWalt FlexVolt battery again. In some previous videos, we went over how we thought it worked in a repair video of the first FlexVolt battery that I looked at. And we discussed here how the 60 volt looked in a typical uh, diagram arrangement compared to the 20 volt and how we felt like the sliding contacts may have worked. And this, of course, was without seeing it. It was just looking at just how it was functioning. So we knew it had to have a jumper here and we knew we had some contact points that were breaking and making to make the batteries line up in series or parallel configuration. So in this video, we want to go a little bit deeper. I have a couple flex volt batteries that belongs to a friend of mine. And they look, one looks very similar to the last one, and one is actually a, a bigger 12 amp hour. But on this 6 amp hour, it's in such bad shape that I want to go further with exploring what it looks like inside. We have several, several bad cells here. I'm going to show testing as we go across. And from minus to C1 is almost fully charged. C1 to C2 is getting really nothing. That's not good. C2 to 3 is not good. C3 to 4 is... 80% charged or better, and then C4 to plus is our fifth cell is almost fully charged, like 80% or so, but I think I'm gonna take these connections to loose to the board that connect from C1 to C3, and I can actually flip up this cover and maybe expose the sliding contacts, since this battery really is uh, probably past the point of being worth repairing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my high wattage soldering iron, and I'm gonna take a loose these spade push connectors, once we get the uh, solder to the flow, we still just have to lift up the resistance of the connection itself. We have to lift up enough for the uh, connection itself to release. We'll do the same here with both sides. We'll speed the video up here so it ain't quite so long a video. But once we get both of these up, now maybe we can pull this little cover up. It's also caught on some silicone and some catches on the side as we can see. Must be another clip hanging on. Yeah, there's the clip hanging on in the back as well. Hidden, we couldn't see it. But now we can actually see our sliding contacts. And it is a little bit different than I thought it was. We can see how important that cover is keeping pressure down like this. Because there's spring-loaded uh, sliders or wipers that wipe across. We'll look at this in more detail later, but it looks like the way this is configured across. Yeah, it looks like our a lot of our battery points of contact. And of course, our... Our C1 and C3, where they connect back to the board, they're also going to go, looks like eight of them across here. There's some different configurations as it slides. It's interesting, some are taller and shorter, so different make and break times. I'm going to go ahead and speed through this, but we're just going to take a loose these balancing leads or uh, cell monitoring wires. we got to take all these loose so we can actually pry the board up and you know look under it as well as many components as this board has i really believe it's at least some components on the back side as well because i've chased out a problem with this one and it seems to be an issue that i can't find like it may be on the back side of the board so we won't know for sure until we lift this and maybe even take off uh the ribbon cable that goes to the back of the board here from my battery contact points. So here I'm just using my soldering iron to release these tabs. This is gonna take a high heat, so I've actually just got a piece of 14 gauge copper wire stuck in my Weller iron here because my other tip started messing up on me. And this actually heats up faster, honestly. That's nothing but a piece of 14 gauge copper wire that I bent in that shape. You can make it any shape you like. So there's the back side of this, and we do see the ribbon cable, and we see a little bit of the connection points here. I'll try to draw this out, how the ribbon cable goes from the connection points here to the, to the board in the back. 
we can see our slide here a little bit better. Let's draw this out. So this is kind of what it looks like. I'll show you here side by side why I drew this the way I did. And my little squares on the outer perimeter of my drawing is not saying that it's minus side of the battery. It's just shaped like the tabs, the actual solder tabs of the battery. That way you can just tell I spaced them out kind of the same way that they spaced them um, on the actual board itself. And I'm just showing here where the, um, the ribbon cable goes. This little small print here is just a, a breakout of how the terminals are, showing how you, you minus and you plus. And then, of course, you break out on the back solder points where the ribbon cable ties in. I'm showing here that you have ID, C2, C4, and TH for the thermal um, where they are respectively. And we'll desolder this and, and take a closer look at it as well. I'm going to use some of this low melt temperature solder you can get this stuff off amazon north ridge fix also has a a little tube of this stuff you can buy and it, it actually works great um he uses it on a lot of stuff on his channel and it, i used to use the um the low temperature solder paste a lot until i seen that he used the low temperature solder it actually is helpful i like it better than the paste and You just mix this low temp solder in there and you'll see we just pull this flex cable right out. It actually keeps it liquid for several seconds, gives you time to actually work with something, makes it much easier. Just give you a few steel shots here of, of the board and that is a kind of a epoxy bottom. You can pull it up, but it actually pulls a lot of the components up with it. So at this point, it's basically a non-repairable board. I mean, it just, it's no way to easily get to this stuff unlike i did here you could try to apply some heat maybe it'll come up without sticking so hard but at this point i wasn't trying to repair the board anyway just trying to see how hard it would be to get to that point just going to show some detail here on the microscope you can even see some of these ships missing pieces where the potting just pulled them right up a lot of diodes and transistors didn't make it uh, through the pulling of that potting material up that's our connection where our ribbon cable was that we used our low melt solder on and this is the bottom part of the board where, where some of your connection for your, say, C2 is on the top part coming through here. I was trying to trace this through a little bit because I wasn't getting a good reading on C2. So it's something to do with the logic on these boards as well. It gets kind of messed up. It's a bunch of fuses on the top of this board. And these fuses all check good. Just going through checking them for the heck of it. Um, I've never seen a fuse fail on one of these yet. I tried to clean the silicone potting off the top because it's soft, but it still left a mess. It is really, really hard to deal with. See some more fuses here like F100, F101, transistors. Again, that's the top of the header where I had the low melt solder. And if you see that 76A resistor here, that's actually where your ID, I believe that even may say ID up at the top of the board by the header but that pin if you'll see that goes up and over to 76a and that's going to be what i believe is the id resistor so if some of the logic is okay for the cell balancing i think a transistor lets that 76a be across the id terminal in our case we were not getting it even though 76a did check i believe it was 600 ohms we're just going to look under the microscope here at even a better view of the uh, sliding contact points and that's what our four points look like they are spring loaded and have to be pushed down and actually for the age of this pack i am pleasantly surprised that it's not it's not really arc and a dark there is some grooves there is some wear i can see an issue over years of use but has held up better than i thought and if we take our diagram and put our little visual aid here of, of four wipers across to mimic this movement it becomes a little more clear with it drawn out the way that we push this down that's that's the way the spring has it and then when we push it down we see that it makes contacts point for the 60 volt and including the jumper built into the tool that slides in on the c1 and c3 post and now you see that we have our 60 volts from plus and it goes through to that 20 volts and then that comes back through and series through the next set and through and back through again and series through the last set and out and there goes your minus out to be 60 volts total with the three in series and of course when we take our 
battery out of the 60 volt tool it, it naturally becomes just a regular 20 volt and we see here that our contacts the way they short across that all of our minus side are connected together in parallel they're all just junction together and this configuration we also see that on the plus side we're all junctioned together so we see how our slide make and break easily configures our 60 to 20 volts respectively so i hope you enjoyed this video today looking a little bit deeper into the flex volt battery pack and has design i'll have some links down in the description of the video some tools and helpful items on my workbench any of those links you click on supports the channel any support you give the channel i greatly appreciate thanks so much for watching and god bless